All right, everybody. Well, we're here at the 49th annual World of Wheels here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Beautiful place here. Uh, the crew got here early this week, set up the old Evil Knievel display and what we had going on. And this morning, I kind of was walking around here on a Friday morning with Mike Waltonberry. Everybody knows he's my little sidekick down there. And we were walking around kind of getting a list of cars and what we could do and interviews to go on. And we kind of went going through fast, as everybody knows, I go through pretty fast and check everybody out. And we stopped by this great blue Mustang this morning. And we introduced, uh, Cheyenne was gone already this morning. So here with me today, I have Cheyenne and her sister, Laura. And the thing that stopped Mike Waltonberry over there was, of course, he's a Ford guy. So we had to check and see the, the great uh, the great Mustang over there. And the thing that we did was I kind of started looking more and more at your car, and it was a piece of the puzzle, and it was about autism. So then mom and dad started talking to Mike about it, and we got kind of got back, and we heard your backstory. And so here we are. So in... Tell us more about it, Cheyenne. So you built a car, and because you yourself have autism. Yes. And you want people to be aware of this. Yes. I don't want people to be a. I want people to be aware, but I want people to be accepting and accept that, okay, I'm different, but this is not going away. This. Yes. So don't try to cure us or fix us. Just accept the things you can't control. And... <laughs> Kids are different. We may be different, but we are so unique. And yes, I designed my car because I wanted to show people that there's so much more with autism. We can do so much more. We're more than one layer. We have multiple layers upon layers. We're like <laughs> an onion that way. <laughs> I was just gonna I was just gonna go back to the old school saying like mom said it's like well, she used to refer to as a as a woman. There's layers. Of, there's, there's so many layers. There's you go layers back and to autism. So the way you you refer to it, there's so many layers. You never get to the core. Yeah. So I'm just like, there's just really a lot going on, and I just want to. Hopefully, my goal is to go to schools, assemblies, teach kids about autism. Not only autism, but mental health is so important to me. Mm -hmm. Because people don't know, like, depression is a real thing. Anxiety is a real thing. You have to deal with these on a regular basis. People don't want to admit that they have these. People don't want to be like, hey, guess what? So do you think it's, do you think more now in the era that we're in in 2024? And obviously, you're only 28 years old. So I'm older than you and even your sister <laughs> over there. But back then, do you think? We used to sweep things under the rug more. Oh, think 100%. I think I think 100 percent because when I was going to school, when I was going to school, it was I don't want to say ignored, but it wasn't to the forefront that it is now. Oh yeah. And I think it's great that you know people like you and your family and everything that's going on with the awareness that's going on with the kids that is going on, um, the awareness that, that that people should know what's going on. There's so many great, well, I mean, even rock bands that that, that are just you know forefronting the, the awareness of everything that's going on, depression and, and anxiety and all these things that are going on with the kids today. But like, yeah. hey, figure this out. I mean, even like for me, so I'm Cheyenne's sister-in-law. Um, like I have a nephew that my sister had no idea that he had autism until we I met my husband and we got really got to dating and introduced me to Cheyenne and learned her story. And they helped my sister get my nephew diagnosed. And it has changed his life for the better. And we had no idea. We just were told, oh, he's shy. He's quiet. He just does these things. But Cheyenne was like, I know what he's feeling. Let's get this figured out. And you didn't have a, and you told me before we started here that when you were younger, you didn't have a voice. You didn't get really get it till you were about 21 years old. Yeah. Huh? I, um, growing up, I was put in, um, people wouldn't talk to me. Um, people were scared to even go near me. I was put in the corner, ever, everything just to not interact with me growing up. Mm -hmm. I didn't have friends growing up. Um, so when I was about 21, I, Decided, you know what? I've had enough. I am going to shine my own light and I'm going to talk to people about autism acceptance because it yeah. is near and dear to my heart. Yes. And I want people to understand. It, everybody needs to be understanding like this is a real thing. Like kids that have these struggles, they don't need to face like these bullying. They don't need to face this on a daily basis. Life is hard enough just being diagnosed. Why throw, oh, you can't, you won't be able to do this. Well, people think, the other thing, dude, people with 
without even having uh, d- depression, anxiety, or autism, yeah. they, they think it's hard enough on their own. Just yeah. being, I guess, you even say normal, I guess, you, you know what I mean? What and, is and normal? <laughs> what, that, yeah, remember, there was a movie that came out, what is normal? Yeah. You know, who is normal? Look, look around, look at everybody else. So pick something in the crowd, who's normal? They're not nobody the same, no two people are the same. So why would you be aware of it? And like, it's hard enough growing up as a child these days anyways, any any child here. Oh, yeah. So let alone going through what you had to go through yeah. and let people be aware. Do you think it was more that they were afraid? Um, yeah, I think they were afraid of the unknown. But I also think it was a little bit of ignorance because people... Mm, I think it's a lot of ignorance. Yeah, because people that purposely, like, I have peer tutors growing up, mm-hmm. which is in school. They go with you and they help you. They know about your disability, but then after they're gone for the day, they talk behind your back. Oh, of course. And they are your peers, right? You look up to them. But people always talk behind people's backs. And I don't understand that in my brain in this world, why somebody would intentionally hurt somebody with the stigma of, well, they say, you're not good enough. You can't drive you can't do this you can't do that in life but look i built a car i did things like yeah there's no stopping somebody once they have their mind to like talking about autism acceptance there's no like telling somebody they can't do it and you know going and going to school i mean yeah. i've only, I only got to talk to you a little while before that but even a five minute conversation you're a very smart woman thanks she is she's a bright one. Oh yeah if you should, yeah. she's learned she learns very fast yeah, you, you yeah i can tell you pick up on things out. very very quickly so even going to school i mean you had i, mean, I can tell you were probably you had good grades in school and things like yeah. that so i think the ignorance of people of not knowing what's going on and i think the other part even when i was going to school you know in the late 80s early 90s going and if you had a kid or a, a, somebody in your class with whether it was autism we didn't even identify half the stuff back then no it was, just, it, it it was just, different it was just different and you go the other way around yep I just barely found out because I did research because I love research <laughs> that in. The, I would have never guessed. <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the 1980s, mm-hmm. the autism was more discovered. Yep. And that was the first time that they used the word autism. I'm glad you did research on that. that the, you know what? Because back then it was like an unheard of word. Like, what is came, that? Like, what is that? Nobody knew what it was. Yeah. And then a lot of people had no idea, even with the, you know, like a great, like your, like your Facebook page piece of the puzzle, they would see it. That whole demographic of the puzzle didn't come out for so long. And now you see these other movies. I think I was just watching a movie the other day and I want to say it was called The Accountant. Oh, we watched that the other okay, night. There you go. We movie. love that. That's a great show. movie, isn't yeah. it? Okay. I don't know if any of the fans have followed it or have seen the movie, but it's a great, great nice. movie. And it that is with um why can't I think of the name of uh, Don't I, I'm not good at actors' names. <laughs> um I'm sorry, uh not not Matt Damon, the uh the other one. It's the uh the accountant. The account it's in the account. But anyways, so he uh he played Superman in yeah. one of those, um so, the name. Anyway, so he but he was the account and he was amazing mind. Yeah, on there. yeah. and do you really? know not not all of it, of course, it was exaggerated a little bit, but most of that was actually based on a true story. Yeah, I have heard that that was based on a true yeah. story, but yeah. it, it just and it shows like how i mean my husband we were kind of watching it and kind of giggling and he's like that's how he stims and for my son yeah. we like to show him I have, we have a two-year-old we like to show him like this is you know auntie has autism and this is what that is mm-hmm. and this is what it looks like when somebody's stimming or when somebody's feeling overwhelmed or they're feeling these emotions so we'll watch that movie and go that's him stimming that's so what he's doing and that's that's part of, so the so as you go back with and a lot of people with autism you see it everywhere now and of course that's what caught our eye this morning is when you were on there and you had the puzzle pieces over the car yeah. So when with the autism, that was the biggest thing that would tie it together is the puzzle pieces. And mm-hmm. now, correct me if I'm wrong, is that how it was always for when the puzzle was always used to stimulate the mind and, and, and control it? Is that what um, it's there for? Or what is your... I believe it's that way. Okay. My, I don't want to say that fact, but that, that, that was just my opinion about how I thought The it puzzle good. piece is, yeah, certain people don't like it necessarily like it, the mm-hmm. puzzle piece anymore but i see it has we're flexible we're not two-dimensional i put out has three-dimensional 
for my own reasons, because I want people to say, hey, we do have layers. Hey, oh, maybe we should talk about that to that. Yeah. Maybe we should talk more and get into the root of everything. And um, I've talked to parents and moms and they come over to me just falling because they thought their kid had no, they just got diagnosed. They have no hope left. I'm here to say, you know what? There is a lot of hope in this world and yeah. your kid can do anything. And they just hug me and they are just like, thank goodness you gave us hope when there was nothing we thought. So, I mean, the puzzle piece is near and dear to my heart and my family's heart. Yep. So my views on it is a little bit differently than everybody else's. And I hope sure. everybody listening um, knows that everybody has different opinions, different views on things sees the world differently it is not a bad thing to see the world differently i think if we could get back to the mindset that it's okay to have your own opinion yeah yeah and you don't have to, and you don't have to have hatred towards it no nope. yeah so like if you're sitting here where it's you and i or three of us or somebody out there it's okay to have a different opinion on things yeah it doesn't I mean i can't be your friend or we can't, we can't have a can't conversation have a family and do whatever and yeah. I, I don't know how in the last couple of years we I mean we won't go on down the whole rabbit hole of <laughs> politics and all these other things but it I don't know how the world changed so much of not being able to have your own opinion. And and so many people were afraid to have their own opinion. In I the think last it's couple harder to hear other people's opinions. And that's part of it. It's sure. just hard to hear somebody's opinion that yeah. is different from yours. Well, they see things different than you. Well, you're younger than us, but I mean, obviously, your mom and dad were the same thing. I, in, in my opinion, the world got soft. Yeah, 100%. The world got soft because you can't do it. You know, we're back in the day, like, you know, guys like me and Mike have been friends for years. So if I make fun of him, say, oh, you know, you're... You know, you look like a little midget over there or something like that. <laughs> you know, I can't, you can't say that anymore because people get mad. They will right? be get mad. And I can't believe, oh, he can't, can't, can't believe he said that. So I think it's more accepting. And even when I was in school, and we were touching before, it was okay. Like if I would talk to you in the morning, but then in the afternoon, you thought, okay, my other buddies are coming in. I can't be caught talking to her later on. Can't chit chat. I can't you be can't, caught not right. being with the cool kids. And that, right. You can't be, you, you want to make sure of it. So I think that's a lot of things that are happening nowadays. And I have no idea what it's like to grow up with you guys did with social media. I I don't think I'd ever have made it if we'd had social media when we were younger. <laughs> um, so I think it's very brave what you're doing yeah. and, and being aware you. of that. And now and and now you're you you're you're more part of it too now, right? I got I got told on our first date, if you don't want to be a part of this, you can get out the car right now. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna hang out with you. I ain't gonna spend my time with you. And so on I think I was like my second date with my husband. Really? We FaceTime Cheyenne and he was like, this is who I'm taking on a date. Do you like her? Or no. <laughs> I actually told um her on what date was it? I think it was our first, second, somewhere in there. And then I FaceTimed and her sister was there and I'm like, what if they get married? <laughs> like, you'll be my sister-in-law. And it was on the first date or the second date? It was somewhere in there. Well, so, probably so, after our so, second So no date. pressure on her first date, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, what if they get married? And then... um. Shortly, they got married. Yeah, we I, did. We got married. We we got married pretty quickly after we started dating. Um, he was a wildland firefighter, and so okay, was, I don't know. It just, yeah. it just when he was gone on fire, it was these guys who I leaned on. I was like, "What do you guys do? How do you do this? How do, How do you, you handle do him being gone and not knowing anything about where he's at or what he's doing?" We don't handle it. They don't. Just, they didn't handle, handle it. It's fine. <laughs> they just said, "Just talk to us, and it'll be fine." And so Shy and I would talk on the phone every night. I was like, "Am I dating her? <laughs> Am I dating dating the whole family at this point?" Because that's who I leaned on. Well, it looks like so, yeah, even being together even at what mike said i mean even the camaraderie you know the families out here watching and listening to what everything you have is going on yeah, yep. yeah so do you think do you think uh that you're gonna that the change is coming that the awareness that you're doing it's coming yeah i think it's coming i think it'll pay off um eventually but i think you're making a big difference shy you spend five minutes with you and you're gonna have a whole oh, new yeah. idea yeah. of what autism That's is like what i tell people i'm like if you give me five 10 minutes, you'll become my best friend ever. Yeah. <laughs> but if you don't give me that time of day and judge me right off the bat, yeah. it's almost like move on. You don't care, whatever. Well, I think I like, I, I like your attitude already because you're, you have the attitude is like, okay, if they can't, if they don't accept me, they don't deal with them. Just move on. You're ready to move on to this next person. Cause you're not going to waste your time with it. So I'm just like, you know what? Just deal with it. I have autism. <laughs> um, when I start to accept it, that's why I'm like, I have autism and I'm going to, I'm going to rock it. I'm going to tell people like I STEM, I do a lot of things, 
my nephew, um, her son, mm-hmm. he sits on my lap and he's like, Auntie, you're crying. You're sad. Can I help you? And then I'm like, no, Wes. And he's like, I'll be your weighted blanket. I'll, <laughs> yes. I'll sit, I'll sit oh, really? on your lap. Yeah. So it's fun. Um, I got to be there when he w- got brought home from the hospital. Okay. Yeah. So she I stepped was, right into the role of auntie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You fit into that pretty good. I was auntie from day one <laughs> when he was born. I just knew my job. Um, and then just like I learned to change diapers at first. I'm like, <laughs> I'm autistic. What am I doing with that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's funny. <laughs> like, She's gotten much better than the yeah, first couple better. diapers. They were pretty rough. They're pretty rough. You call wife... them and you're like, why are you wet? Are you wearing a diaper? And then you're like, oh, Auntie Shy changed your diaper. Well, well, she's different. gotten much better with baby number two. We're good. I mean, like, <laughs> hey, come on. There's some parents that will still do it. And they don't even have autism. I, would, <laughs> I was like, the first couple of stinky diapers, I got to tell you, I did gag. And I was like, oh, my gosh, you got my shoe. <laughs> oh, throw! She's like, just throw it in the garbage. I don't even love that pair of shoe, anyways. <laughs> I would. Do that. You would throw it away. But I'm just like, but as I get older and more mature, and yeah, <laughs> he gets older. It's so it's easier. Better. It's a lot easier. <laughs> I know she's grown up with him. I think, right, Shy? You've grown up with Wesson. Yeah, I've grown up. And how old is Wesson now? He's gonna be three in July. Be three in July. Yep, yep. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. They've been best friends since the day he was born. Oh, that's great. And she's our nanny when we're at work. Her oh, and her and mom. So, yeah, so. I take care of two kids now. Look at that. This is a great so, job. So do you so when uh so do you like child care too? You like taking care of the kids? Yes. Before um Laura, I was before my time. <laughs> I was um uh what is it called? You were a kindergarten day care daycare teacher? Daycare teacher, and I was like preschool, but I would do, okay. I got into the private preschool part. Okay. Um. So helping those four year olds, like, I loved it. Like, I can play cards with you anytime, anywhere. Like, I stem a lot. I do my own thing. Like, I don't care. Like, at Autorama today, I'm like playing with this little kid, and we're just like rolling cards back and forth. Of course. And I'm just like, man, this is cool. If only everybody in the world could think this way about a kid, you know, just think incredible if things. You could, yeah, if you could just, you know, rewind one back when you're a kid and everybody could just have the acceptance when, because you didn't know any better back then. Nope. You everything know, you were just putting a mix. Everything was fun. You didn't care what they looked like, who it was. It was, it was great. You know, and that's all it was. I think that's, that's her superpower true. is the ability. Yeah. And that's why she connects with kids so well is the ability to see the world they, the way they see it. I can try as much as I want and I can connect with my kids and everything like that and play with them. But there is another level that Cheyenne can reach that I can't. Well, I think it's a, I guess it's a level of innocence, I yep. guess we'd call Absolutely. it, right? Because you have it and you're so, you're so full of life, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I could see it right away. As soon as you walked over here before, I said, I told it to Mike and I was sitting up here talking with somebody else before and I said, that's her. Cause I remember when we first walked around the car on the loop, and then you were walking over. Yeah. And then you had, you, as soon as you turn around, you had a smile. You have, a, you have an amazing smile. Just so you know. <laughs> you. Don't let anybody take that one from you. No. Keep it going. No. <laughs> no, you're doing really good. Yeah. yeah. But I just, my um, sister-in-law here and my brother mm-hmm. are my gar- co-guardians. Okay. Um. So if anything happened to my parents, they would ultimately help me. Okay. Yeah, we would legally um, become her guardians. So her parents are the guardians right now. It, it just helps with her and the abilities for her to do everything that she does and stay at home. Um, and then if something, heaven forbid, would ever happen to mom and dad, then my husband and I would take over and she would just come with us. So you have security all over. Yeah. She got a lot of weighted blankets. Yeah, you got a lot of, <laughs> lot of weighted blankets. Which got, yeah. That's a good thing for a family to have is weighted blankets. Yep. Yeah, and hopefully they would help me continue to stay on this path talking to people oh always so so what what, what that's where that's what i was gonna bring up next so your path and uh, so now you have a facebook page here that yeah. we we're looking at before and i thought this was really neat when we looked at your card before and I, of course i grabbed it and we came over here and of course again we'll go back to the puzzle pieces and you actually came up with this name yourself pieces of the puzzle that's yeah. your facebook page so now is that and now you're doing, you said yeah. you how, how many videos do you have? I, or how many, you said six years of videos? Six years of videos I have made um, over the course of time. 
and I've made them from anything what people want to know. Mm -hmm. I'm like makeup editorials to hair. How do you do it being autistic? Because yep. yeah. the misconception is um, people say, oh, you're autistic, so you can't wear makeup, right? You can't do your hair, right? Because you're autistic. And I'm like, we're normal. We're people, too. She's just, <laughs> she's cool. She's badass. She's got tattoos. She'll go. Yeah. You got tattoos also? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I have a tattoo um, of a puzzle piece, of course. And it says, <laughs> I would have never guessed. And it, has the, <laughs> it has the Disney castle. Okay. And that stuff, fireworks sh shooting out of the Disney castle. And it says, um, do you forget what your tattoo said? <laughs> oh my God. Um, autism doesn't define me. I oh, define yeah. autism. I had to think about it for a minute. Okay. She got it. She got it. <laughs> I was like, I can't remember. You can't remember that. But I truly believe like you will never be able to tell me what goes through my mind or like people can help me with my autism, but. I have to try to help myself first. That's why I got my service dog over there, Mickey. Um, That's where you're walking before. That's yeah. what Mickey, we saw you walking Mickey before this morning. He is my service dog. Um, I got him at 15 weeks. So he's he's my buddy now. And I just love that little guy. To death. <laughs> She's now, a dog mom. She's got it locked dog mom. And now do you, have, do you also have the... Now, the other thing, obviously, we didn't even talk to Bayside because we've been going over the history. Is that, oh, yeah. sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. <laughs> no, we're, we're, <laughs> the, the one thing we, we, we were talking about before is obviously how we met you is because we were at the Autorama Car Show. We haven't even talked about your Mustang yet. Oh, yeah. So I was like, <laughs> oh, I forgot I had that. Well, we kind of did. We were going up there. So, and, you know, so um, how, did you, how did you choose a Mustang? Um... Because me and my dad were thinking about it and thinking about different cars. And, of course, at first, I have thought about, like, a bug. Like, Herbie's really loved it, you know, the car. A little cute. You have a little, 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 yeah, really love bug. But um, my dad thought, how about a show car? And I can't drive. So me and my dad thought, what a better way to share my message than building a Mustang together. And he loves Mustangs. Ford Mustangs. That's true. So he uh, show up with anything other than a Ford Mustang. He's like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> so that, 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 that's opinion, huh? <laughs> I mean, so much he's got it tattooed on his arm. So I'm pretty sure he's dedicated to the Mustang game. You know, I won't go down that whole rabbit hole about the Ford guys, but it's okay. So um <laughs> I saw this car at um a dealership, a private dealership more of and it was grabber blue and i i gotta be honest with you guys i did not know if i wanted the mustang because i'm like it's really bright it's blue it wasn't really you at first huh? but at first but then i'm like it's autism awareness blue why that blue for autism yeah um so I, i'm like it fits in with me so god but i told my dad looked at him i'm like well name it cookie monster just Cookie Monster. And he's like, no, it's a cool Mustang. I'm like, no, it's Cookie so Monster. He liked the Mustang part. He didn't want to, he didn't want to cartoon it up though, huh? Yeah, but I decided to, it'll take on a life of its own. And I'm like, hey, um, the first car show we go to with it being custom was just a stripe, nothing else. And my storyboard. And I go there and automatically I light up and I start talking to everybody. And my dad has never seen that. Really? Yeah. My dad has never, ever seen me act like that. I'm talking to people. I get people, they walk past my car. I'm like, hey, do you want to talk about us? <laughs> I would run out <laughs> from the back of the car up there. I would forget my lunch because... To you were so excited to start talking to people. Yeah. Still does that, by the way. I you will skip lunch if it means she gets to talk to 20 more people. I think it's... I mean, the, and again, the car, the car is great. The car is really not here, but this... The story, the thing that I love is getting you out here right now and letting everybody know what's going on. Because you are just, I, I don't even, I don't even know how to say it, a character in yourself. I mean, you're, you're, you're just a powerhouse. You really are. So She's just as bold as that car is. 
Oh yeah. They they thought they match perfectly. Yeah. You can't ignore Cheyenne. Yeah. No. You can't. No, you she can't. is old and she's gonna let you know yeah. that she's here and she I'm, I'm surprised it took you until you were twenty one to get a voice. Right? Yeah. She's got one and it's big. Yeah, yeah, you're doing really good. I just I love what I do. Yeah. Not gonna change what I do anytime soon. And I think your awareness will, will let 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 the other kids, the younger kids going on, um, is, as far as going on there where they, they don't have to be afraid anymore. Yeah. yeah. Just be yourself. Hey, if it means meeting me at a car show and let's play some games, like bring your games out there. I've actually thought about going to like a car show and getting out in a kiddie pool and getting in a <laughs> kiddie pool while I'm talking about autism because it gets hot in there are a couple summer times. Oh, outside shows, I'm sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So I'm like, get out that kiddie pool. It'll be right next to my seat. If you want to get in the kiddie pool too, let's like talk to <laughs> together, right? I think it'd be good if you had you had questions even online. The kids that can't reach out to you right away, but I think do you have on your on your Facebook or your any of the stuff? Do you have can they can they they message you and and, and get back to you? On yeah, it? you can reach out to me on my Facebook. Um, I would appreciate people that follow pieces of the puzzle to see my journey. If I can help you with anything. I would sure love to help you guys learn more things if your child just got diagnosed. Um, I would really love to help you. Um, I know all the things, SSI, financially stuff, how they can get help in the future. Um, we've been through it all as a family. Now, have you started? So now, right now, with the pieces of eight that you have going on, or I mean, the pieces of the puzzle. Now, do you have uh, it set up where you can help like different links on a website or any of stuff to kind of help people or you didn't get that far yet? Maybe um, where you can actually, no I website. think that'd be a really good thing. And maybe we could, maybe we could even get some people in touch with you yep. to help you out to maybe do a website development for you. Cause we have, we have a lot of connections. That's all. So yeah. Maybe we could help you out. I would love to, um, somebody to help me out with like getting a website done so that more people could maybe hopefully interact or even know more information or whatever it is, that would be really um, beneficial and really cool. Well, I think I, I, I've, a, I've got a couple of friends I could connect you with. I think I could do that. Okay. So we could do that. And I think we, I think if you had your website, we'd get you a link to it and, and get you out there where they could actually talk and connect with you and maybe see about even getting you to other places and do some speaking for them. Yeah. That'd be awesome. That would be yeah. cool. Yeah. Watch that. Yeah. 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 I, I think you'd be a good speaker. <laughs> I don't know why you would think that I would be a good speaker. Like, and there's the personality. And there's the personality going. So, have you have you been gone to schools or anything yet? And and, and um, no. Just speaking yet? I did one grade school. Um, just with the car, trying to get little kids warmed up to me. And man, I love those kids. I mean, they come up with the funniest things to tell you. Oh, for and sure. I'm like. You guys have brilliant minds at that age. <laughs> like, grade schoolers, like, I'm just like, if only, like, I can tap into that a little bit. Sometimes I don't have that much energy, but when I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, once you start getting into it and you get to tap in the energy, but I think it's a really good thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. So what's so what's next after this? Um, what's your what's your, what's your summer schedule like? Do you have a big list of itinerary to do you? My summer schedule is... Pretty much all car shows. All car shows. Almost every weekend we're at okay. a car show, and then we finish out with Peach Days in Brigham City. So there you go. That's usually so now, the last. Do you have one, any? Now, do you plan on just showing the car? Are you gonna maybe get out, maybe do any little speaking, a little little stand about autism like you did before? I think we're gonna get her into some schools. We're gonna make it yeah, happen. I think so. I think you should get into some schools. I think you really should do it. I think people will really be accepting of that, and I think people are looking for it. Yeah. Yeah. I actually know. think that it would be a big game changer in schools to talk about these things and make it known that, you know what, this is a real thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just yeah. listen, and this is a real thing. I promise you guys won't come out there and be bored and be like, what's this assembly for? Yeah, and they would know about it. And I think even, I think, you know, going to a school seminar or school assembly, I think that is really big. Because I think you'd you'd be surprised how many people would make, would reach out to you. I really do. I think yeah. I think I think the I think the walls are dropping around a lot of people these days. I think you can reach out to. You. I think people are looking for connection. You know, everybody oh. went through being shut down, locked down, isolated, and now they're like, you know, what? I just want to connect with people. 
There are people that it's, know what it's like. It's back. Now, now yeah. I think, you know, we had that little, I guess we'll call it a hiccup in the system there for a while. <laughs> a little you know, without, fun, without yeah. having people go ahead on the, doing that. But now people are wanting to get together more and more yeah. every time and doing stuff and just talk and just talk and find out what's going on in the world. Yeah. yeah. Human connection. Everyone wants it. Even if they have autism, everybody wants to be connected well, I don't, with somebody. I, yeah, even if they all, we, when we talk to people all around the country all the time and, and do that stuff and, and for you to connect with them, I think that'd be a big thing. I love to talk. <laughs> you love to talk and let people be aware of it? My sister-in-law and my brother call me Chatty or Gabby <laughs> or any one of those things. She's a good conversator. Is, 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 you're good with that? Like, I'm good with it. I'll never run out of words. <laughs> nope. I've been, I went to... Oh, what was the place I went to, Laura, where they had to cut me off? Which one? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> which one? <laughs> she, uh, she actually has. So she's done a few speaking events. It just hasn't been schools, but she spoke with the Rotary Club. Oh, okay. um, so we're we are, we're from Brigham City, and so she spoke with the Brigham City Rotary Club, and they were like, "Hey, we really love your story. We love how excited you are, but um." But we all got to go back to our jobs because this was just the Because she kept thing. going. Yeah. So we'll finish this another time. <laughs> they told me, like, you can go for 10 minutes or you can go however long you're running. I'm like, you don't tell autistic. So they did. Like, <laughs> she has no time limit because she'll find one for you. And she'll find one for you for sure. <laughs> I'm like, honestly, I'm like, you don't tell an autistic person that you put. You could go on for how long you want to. They had to bail me. They had literally a bell and they bring at me. <laughs> they like, did. And you just kept going? She's yeah. like, let me finish my I, story. Real I'm quick. just. Well, you know, if you start getting into schools, when you start getting around the country, you're going to have to put a time frame on it. So you're going to have to get a. You might have to have your sister on there and start helping you get bullet points. Yeah. She does she get there. She down. She'll do that with the card. If somebody comes up to her, she, she has her talking points where she'll kind of like. How much do they want to know about autism? And she'll say a few things. And if they catch on, she'll keep talking. Otherwise, you'll switch okay. back off and do it that way. Yep. Okay. And she'll just let them keep walking. If, if they it's good. don't yep. want to know about it, I'm like, fine. Good luck. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> have a good day. Like, I hope you still have a good day. But if you want to talk to me. <laughs> it, 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 that's the best part about it. If you had anybody um, that you would bring up uh, that you'd like to that like to thank or help you through what you've been through in life, who, who would it? Who are the key people? I would definitely thank my dad for believing in me. I would definitely thank my mom for um, helping me through the hard times growing up, even when it was difficult. Um, they are awesome support team. I would love to thank my brother. So I have a few people. No, that's but what, that's what I doing it. would love to thank my brother for supporting me whether whatever it is that he's supporting me with with the car shows talking about autism he supports me but my dad is truly the backbone he's truly the person that believed in me the most to push me out of my comfort zone and to get me where i am today it's my dad and he's my hero from day one i swear when i was born he became my hero because my dad's my backbone that is great. Um, my mom is, she's held my hand through trimesters, through me going through changes, through me being scared, through me feeling hopeless, like I can't go any further. My mom is like, you can go further. You can do this. Keep on fighting. That is good. That's, I mean, and you know, and look, look where you are today. So, yes, I appreciate um the people that have my back the most is yeah. my family. And I just want to give a big, huge shout out to all my family because even my niece and my nephew, yeah. <laughs> they have my back, even though that they're young and they don't know. They know it. I see dad out there looking how proud he is right there. Yeah. And my <laughs> sister-in-law back here at Laura for, <laughs> for becoming part of this yeah. family and for really caring um and really enough to show like okay this is my sister-in-law i got shoved into it maybe but here we <laughs> go with it, it. But she's rocking dad yeah. yeah you guys are you guys are really good together so my family yeah just love my family just i hold on to every little bit that i get with them that is great so so if anybody's looking for this they can follow you at the pieces a piece of the puzzle on facebook right yeah pieces of the puzzle on facebook look me up 
I got your guys' back. I will totally answer questions for you guys. Like, if you guys want me to make a certain video, I will make that video happen. That's true. She will. And any questions, I think it's good it's the, that you can do it for parents of what they're looking for. Have any questions about how to raise your child? Or whatever. I mean, you're, you're, you're there for that. Yeah. I just want to be able to not be a sub just talk to people about autism, but I want to be there for the parents. I want to be there for the kids. I want to be there. I want to help them. I want to do whatever I can to help the community learn about what it's like. And Dad will take the Mustang. You'll do appearances for the Mustang. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah, Mike wants to take it for a ride. Just ask Go Dad. Oh, he'll oh. take you, but don't don't ask to drive it. I don't even want to drive it, and I've been married for a while with him. <laughs> I don't want to drive that thing. It's beautiful, the, but the gas and the brakes are a little touchy. So you might end up going through a wall. <laughs> so, so you you said something before, and I had a question for you. So have you um? So you said because right now, obviously, you don't drive, right? Yes. Okay. So have you ever has Dad ever attempted? I'm sure he has to. Try to teach you one time, right? Um, I'm thinking in the future when I have a lot of experience behind me and sure, of course. And that stuff. Um, I remember the time you tried to drive something. Oh, I tried to drive a tractor. You guys want to hear this story? It's hilarious. <laughs> Look at Dad over there. <laughs> <laughs> He's shaking his head because he, he remembers. So my sister-in-law was pregnant over here with very with, very pregnant i was wesson. very very pregnant was very large you could not miss me <laughs> <laughs> with wesson first baby and i'm just like so i want to drive a tractor you know get on on grandpa's tractor because it's a lot lower and she's head down like this the whole and time I'm head, and i'm head down and i'm facing down because i get perception problems mm -hmm. not there so I'm looking down and I have like no glasses, nothing on me. So I'm like driving like this. My sister-in-law is in front of me. My head's down. I almost took her out. <laughs> I'm like, how did you miss me? I'm real big right now. <laughs> but um, that same day, she got hit by a peach. Yeah, I did get hit by a peach. We were, we were out picking peaches in the backyard. And my husband was like, this would be fun. Chuck. <laughs> and I was like, oh, so it was an intentional throw. Yeah, it was an intentional peach throw. And I threw right back, but I don't have aim. So I accidentally hit him right in the face. It was a really good day. <laughs> so called for. FYI, FYI, do not ever have an autistic person drive if they're not ready because no. they might take out the pregnant lady. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, an accident, an accident. We would have to tell the officer, oh, oh sorry. I don't know, officer. She was she was just picking peaches. I didn't see the big bump sign that was blue. Uh, I'm so, I'm really sorry. My bad. Please don't like. So nobody got in trouble for it then. No, nah, no. Nah. Nah, it's just one of those ones where you went really shy. You goober. Pay attention, and then we just kept doing what we were doing. Yeah. Okay. Like, but like, what do we do in the car now, though? Every once in a while. She wants to drive. That's her goal. So what we'll do, oh, especially gonna, if that's your goal to drive with mom, with she was with me and and Colin. We'll we'll be driving. I'm like, shy. How do I get to Walmart? I don't know where I'm going. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, where do we go? And she's like, uh, turn. And I'm like, turn where? And she's like, turn, turn I, this I, way. <laughs> I'm like the GPS. Yep. If I get you lost, GPS correcting. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll have her tell us how to get somewhere because we want to see if she can remember the directions of how to get from point A to point B because that's oh, really? be a big part of her driving is remembering how to get home or how to get to the store or these certain things. So we'll test her every once in a while and say, Shy, I forgot how to get to the store. Where are we going? And she's like, uh, turn. You <laughs> like some She will, yeah. Sometimes we're at the stop sign and then I'll tell them where to turn. Oh, yeah. She's like one of those GPSs. It's like recalculating the route right as you need to turn left. This is my brain. Recalculating. Turn on Route 60. <laughs> recalculating. Recalculating. Turn around. Make it you turn now. <laughs> she's like, turn left. I don't know where left goes, but turn left. I don't know my directions left and right, so I will be like, okay, L's put them together and be like, this one looks like a pretty good way, a pretty good out. I'm thinking it's this way. Um, let's go this way. I think that's the right direction. So you're pretty helpful on a road trip. Very. You will not get lost. You might end up going through the Grand Canyon. That may not be intentionally where you want to end up. But, man, you'll have, like, a very cool scenic route. <laughs> you find the scenic route, even if there isn't one. Even if there isn't one. I'll be like... 
on your right, there's an ocean. On your left, there's an ocean. You've made it. <laughs> you figure it out one way or the other, right? All roads lead to somewhere. It yeah. Matter. Yep. Like, I can be a, I'll be a great tour guide. Like, if you want me to be a tour guide. That'd be, that'd be a career. Like, Okay, how many? I think tour guides talk, don't they? They just keep talking about <laughs> everything, all the history and all. The I can see things. her on a tour bus. I can yeah. see her on a tour bus. Somebody's driving, she just tells us about every single thing that goes wrong. She's like, "Did you know that that building has this many bricks in it?" <laughs> yeah, she could go. She go through it like the Hollywood stars. You know, you go through and tell everybody where the homes yeah. are. Oh, she would know all the history. Oh, by the She'll way, find it. On in my car, all the puzzle pieces combined, even the hidden ones. There's three hundred and fifty. Just saying to everybody, I do know how to count. Just saying. Was that including the new additions in the door, Dan? Um, The new additions were closer to 360, I think. She says there's 350. Yep, I know. It. And then, well, maybe, maybe 360. Like, yeah, I'm just like remembering because I did go through them before. And I tell kids to come there. And I'm like, you count them. Your parents will be grateful. Yeah, give them about 20 minutes. Babysitter like... <laughs> I can babysit them at, oh, it's 140. 400? 406. 450? 460. 460. Okay. 460. Okay, correction. It is 460. (laughs) So on one Mustang, there are 460 pieces of puzzles. So people are like, how many pieces of the puzzle does it take? 460. (laughs) So, you know. Hey, there's my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I met him today. He has autism. He's a pretty cool kid. Oh, so you you just met him today at the show? Yeah. Well, look at that. He's a pretty cool kid. I mean, like, he drives his his cars and that stuff. We were going back and forth with cars. He's a pretty so, cool so kid. Like, so you're making connections. Yeah. Every every single car show, she will oh, find people it, that have. So at every 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 car show, you think you're making a connection? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like, I like to help talk to parents and kids. I mean, like, yeah, the kids are the funnest part. I'm like, I'll get down their level, and I'm like, what do you want to do? Do you want to race? I'll race with you. Yeah. Like, where do you want to go? I that got is it. That's so great, and you get these kids to open up. Yeah, and she uh, does. Um, some of these kids don't make friends very easily and they have a hard time making friends, but I can open them up really fast. And for some reason, I just play with them and I just like get to know them. Well, you give them their, their sense of, norm- of normalcy or whatever's normal in the world these days, yeah. right? Yeah. She shares her story, but you know, the amount of stories that she gets to hear or we all get to hear at every car show is really cool because you yeah. do get a different amount of people that come up and say, this is, this is awesome. I didn't know that you guys were doing this. And then they'll share their story and how they got diagnosed or their kids got diagnosed or the different things that they're struggling with. And Shai's like, you know what? I have an answer for that. I have this for you. Yeah. Let me help you with this. Here's the thing I, I get told all the time that really kind of bothers me, but it's good for people to hear is high and low functioning. Yeah. There is no functioning label. Just call me by my name, like equals, um, hey. <laughs> but, yeah, so you just need your name. You don't need a label on because, it. Oh, yeah. They'll walk up to her and go, you must be really high functioning. And she's like, what? I'm a human. What are you talking about? And they're like, no, you're like really high functioning. That's really cool to I'm see. Like, and it's like, what? I'm like, you see my, like, you see this much of my day every yeah. time I go to car shows. You don't see, like, I'm like the Titanic. The you don't see right my underneath the titanic you don't see how it sunk yeah like so i'm just like just because you see me that much doesn't mean i'm all over the spectrum like i connect like i'm three one second i connect like i'm five yeah, and, i don't think you, you know problem with social skills at all i'm nope. just like so i tell people that cursors i'm like why the fuck do you need label it's like telling if you say you're low functioning, it's like telling somebody like they're not gonna be able to do that. You know? How would you feel if somebody said, Oh, you aren't gonna be able to do something your whole life? And that, you know, well, you'll yeah, believe it. They, 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 you'll believe it. You start enough people tell you that you start believing yourself in a mindset. Yep. Unless you start ignoring yeah. the world. So unless you go, you know what? I'm gonna do the polar opposite of that. Yeah, and that's what so, Shy does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm a stubborn one. I'm like, you know what? You know what? 
just like kind of go in one ear out the other and do your own thing. She's like, let me prove you wrong. Let me show you why I can do this. I'm like, a, I love to prove people wrong. I guess real out proving <laughs> people wrong. <laughs> and I think everybody does deep down. A little bit. You're like, yeah. huh. Yeah. Deep down inside. But I think you, you. it's a little bit bigger for you. Yeah. Deep down inside. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> it's not deep down inside you. Let everybody know that you did that. <laughs> let everybody know that you're going on. Yep. Yeah. I learned how to clean the house all by myself. Oh, I mean, like, that's a big milestone for me. Like, cleaning my the whole house. Like, doing the basement and upstairs. Oh, my gosh. Huge milestone for me. Yeah. And she cooks now. And she cooks. And oh, I yeah. cook. Really, that, okay. What's your favorite thing to cook? Like, I cook, like, spaghetti. Okay? I love spaghetti. Anything pasta and cheesecake, she's going to be all there. All yeah. there. Cheesecake sounds good over to her now. Hey, I think there's some cheesecake over at one of these booths. I'm going to hit that. You know what? Back. Really? Oh, yeah. Marry a cheesecake? I'm all there. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the recipe that you want to try when we get back to Monorama? Because... We're, we like to cook together. That's our thing. Oh, we, we're in the kitchen yeah. together. We're cooking. We're baking. And she now um, has gone into sourdough with me. So we both have sourdough. And Look we that. do that. But she wants to make something with sourdough. It's what is it? Discard sourdough. I want to make cheesecake with sourdough. That's right. Cheesecake with sourdough. Sourdough cheesecake. We're going to try, try it out. You never know what to happen. They're both good. So it's so, sort of together. It'll be a good time. And, oh, my gosh. This, like, sourdough, like, you... Oh, it's so good, people. What do we do on Sundays? Every Sunday, what do we do with the sourdough? With your sourdough specifically? Oh, every Sunday we make um, pancakes. Sourdough. That's our tradition now is to make pancakes. <laughs> tradition. Sourdough pancakes. Sourdough awesome. pancakes. She makes really good. I mean, they're really good. We, start, we might have to start double double in the batch just because we go through the whole oh, Especially week. on a Sunday, you got to go through and make it all. <laughs> like, make sure we get something to eat. Oh, yeah. You know what? Just like hang out with me just like contact me on pieces of the puzzle and say okay i don't have nothing to eat what are you still making? make me some sourdough oh yeah she'll yeah. make you some there sourdough you yeah she's gonna do you know what you just sit near hang out with me sometimes because i got a lot going on you got a lot going on yeah. you're 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 busier so what's the so the rest of the weekend you're gonna hang out the show here and visit and meet some more people yeah that's why it's, it's first day so I also plan to go back to the hotel and go swimming. Well, I, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Got to relax and unwind. Let me relax and unwind. After, yeah. You know, after a hard day's work, talking to people, I know it's so much work to talk to people. But it is. That's what I do. It's hard work. <laughs> you, you, you lose your voice. You can lose your voice. Oh, I've several years I've done these. These guys have seen me do it on a Saturday, depending on who we're talking to and how excited you get. Sometimes I lose my voice on a Friday night, even. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, it's then. Then I'm like, okay, what I do is for Saturday. You're like, yeah. I'm just gonna be real quiet, but I'm still gonna try and talk. Oh, it's it's gets bad at Saturday, especially for that outdoor show. So, oh yeah. When I lose my voice, I know sign language. I learned it in high school. Really? Sign language. Interesting fact about me. I picked it up like that, so I can at least communicate to people enough to get what I want. But it depends on if they understand me. Well, that was the biggest thing there too, because I'm like, you know. What you know, I didn't know about that. So, like, <laughs> I need to write me some notes and be like, I need a sandwich. And she's really good at it too, though. If she's feeling really overwhelmed or overstimulated, and she's having a hard time explaining why she's frustrated, she'll start using sign language. And the one that picks it up wow. best is Colin. He he can kind of pick out what she's saying. Really, it's pretty neat to watch. Wow. But so, I had a question for you. So I'm out, I'm out here looking out here. So what what breed is the dog? He's a Pumsky, so he's a Pomeranian Husky. He's a fluff ball. He's a big fluff ball, yeah. <laughs> I can see that. When I just a ball got fluff. him, he was solid white with one black stripe on his back. And, um, yeah, now it's all fanned out, and now, now he's all, all colorful. He's like a peacock, you know, <laughs> like he... Like, if you could talk about peacock, how they get the beautiful oh, yeah, colors. Beautiful feathers, yeah. colors like he's got that. a beautiful brown running through the white. Yeah, like, I don't know, but I got him when I needed him the most. Yeah, my life. he's been there for you. And he's been there for me ever since then. And he came to me, and I got him into training like that. I'm like, I'm not going to do any of, this, any of this puppy stuff. I'm 
Well, puppy step Looking comes very well. This one, I mean, he's just chilling out over there in the cart. I mean, he's, he's sitting in the wagon. He's that's a new in the one. Wagon over there, yeah. So that's a good one, you know, for him. Give, he's never had that before. Give the service dog a ride. And the toddler's well, going over. <laughs> there you go. Um, this either talking to me or watching this could be interesting. I don't know. I could see this on the news. Taller attacks well, Pomsky. <laughs> there we go. Oh, coming out. Well, what we'll do is we'll let you go start going and enjoy the show. But thanks for being on here today and, and getting the word out and, and talking yeah. about your car and your history. And again, they can reach you at Piece of Piece of the Puzzle on Facebook, right? Yeah. And you know, and you're of course all the way on the other side of the building over there in that beautiful blue Mustang over there with the family. Yep. And you can't miss the family. Everybody's got the blue shirts on, match yeah. the car. You yep. got a question, look for a puzzle piece and we'll answer it for you. Yeah. <laughs> Just look Wait. for the heart with the puzzle pieces. Yes. Keep the heart keep with the puzzle pieces. The heart. And of course you're willing to talk to anybody. Yep. If you want to <laughs> talk for maybe two hours, <laughs> I'm there for you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get going and enjoy the rest of the show. So thank you, ladies, for being on the show today. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Of course. Thanks for having us. All right. Well, let's get let's go go and enjoy the rest of the show. Okay. Sounds like a good okay. plan. Yep. All right. <laughs> 